Okay. Shall we record this? I am recording. Oh, there you go. Recording. Yeah, definitely get this. Not streaming. <laughs> Unless you want me to. Oh, he just he just raised her up. Yeah, right now. I think we're okay. Sure. Raymond's still on that footage. Sure. Absolutely. So he's gonna talk to me. Can I start now? Okay. We are removing the pledgets now that we've placed 10 to 15 minutes ago. And we'll begin some injections in strategic locations. We use an auto injector that provides a Nice, low, steady infusion of medication. It's foot controlled. I'd like to begin with just the face of the middle turbinate here. Usually use the carpules are 1.8 mLs, and we'll probably use probably a third to a, to a half of an mL per location. We've got a septal spur here, so we're going to work around that. Also, a big concha bullosa. You have a freer, Gloria? I'm going to try to lateralize this middle turb just a bit so we can get back to the, the rostrum. You might hear just a little crinkling. Janet. Very good. Very good. See that middle turbinate lateralize. We can look back and see the superior turbinate. And we just like to get back to that rostrum. Get some injection near that sphenolethmoidal recess. There we go. And then it'll just get some hydro dissection. There we go. Back toward the sphenoid os. How many injections per side do you do? Usually one, two, three, four, probably five or six total. We'll also be anesthetizing that area when we get the sphenol the uh, sphenopalatine block here shortly. And I back up and I'll get the attachment of the middle turbine in here. Just back a little bit, sure, sure. So they're thinking right at eleven fifteen. Okay, great. Mm. 
Can I have that freer, Gloria? <clears throat> okay, good. And back here for this phenopalatine, where that middle turb turns lateral, it's a good place to get some infusion for that sphenopalatine block. We might do the septum and turbs a little later, Jamie, just so that they don't get lose some of their, you know, some of the block. Okay. We can always inject a little later. Okay. Um, maybe after we map the sinuses, I can come back and do that. That might be the way to do it. All right, so let's have the... Um, <clears throat> no. I've only done the left side. We doing okay on time, Jamie? So here's kind of tight over here. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, we're doing good. Great. Okay, now we have 10:43. Okay. So again, injecting the face of the middle turbinate. to get lower down on the middle turbinate here. How many do we use on the other side? Okay. the freer. There we go. That's what we want to see. Okay. <clears throat> so just lateralize that middle turbinate a little bit so we can slip back here to the rostrum. 
make sure we get a good infusion. Test one, two, three. We're good. Freer. Thank you. So now I'm going to work back here to get to that a little bit of a sphenopalatine block back here. That was a little tricky, getting exactly where you want to be. Looks like a good infusion there. Very important to get this area well anesthetized. You're doing a, an ethmoid, especially the posterior ethmoid work. Turn this way, dear. Very good. Okay. Get the attachment of the middle turbine in here. They don't want that in the picture. They just wanted it back out of the way. We're not using it. I told you that yesterday. We're not. We're not using it, Christine. Sorry. Okay, let's go ahead and map out these sinuses here. <clears throat> let's have a freer. There you go, dear. Some see the edema here, Florian? Mm -hmm. She's got edema here in the middle meatus. Yeah, we're in there. So <clears throat> this. Yes. 
See how that a demon right there? The blood pressure is better. Okay, got that one. That's the bigger one, yeah. Okay. Okay. And this is this. Yeah. All right, can I have the uh, path assist there? <clears throat> Now this, we need a new, see this? Light is not very good. Yeah. They're just not very bright. How you doing, sweetie? Feel that a little bit. Feel that a little bit? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Went in good, yeah. Okay, good for it. Yeah, that goes in pretty good, Gloria. That wire goes good, do it again. Goes in good, looks like it. Yep, did it go okay? Yeah, good. Bend the balloon, I don't know what you mean. Uh, no, 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 no. Just wipe that off. I just want to use the probe now oh, for the sphenoid. Can I have the, um, yeah, thank you, dear. Yeah, gotcha. No, just wipe that off and make it look like new and we'll be good. <clears throat> There it is right there. Okay. I mean, you know, we could do it, but it just makes me feel better already knowing. <laughs> you know? Okay, let's have a freer. Oh yeah, I told we're gonna we were just to get we can turn it off now. Okay. How about just a little suction? She needs the seven on there and all that. She do it on the other one? Yeah. yeah she needs to move it to this one. All right, then this needs to be, everything needs to be moved down here if I'm gonna use this suction. This cart needs to be moved down. Do you think that'd be easier, Christina? Or? What do you think? It's not that great. Mm -hmm. 
All right, Christina, I need, I, I don't like this. We need some other, we need to put like a towel here and I want a whole one of these. We don't need to ration for this case. I want a big green one and a big one of these. <clears throat> Can I have the, the uh, probe? Sphenoid probe, there, thank you, there it is, I forgot. it right there. Very shallow. Yep, that's it. again. Thank you. Just pat it back into place. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so I got all six mapped out. So <clears throat> Gloria, can you pull up my shirt at the end of the procedure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the gun show, that's right. Thank you. Now see this what happens is this tears and it starts to move. So we need something like a, do we have a surgical towel or anything like that? Did that come with Get that blue towel right there. That's perfect. So what we'll do is put it under her head. Um, let's have her lift. This will move. Let's put it. Let's hold that for me. <clears throat> All right, sweetie. I'm gonna lift up your head for just a minute and slip this under here. There you go. <coughs> perfect. All right. There you go. You're doing great. Perfect. Good. See, that'll be much better. And then the white pad, too. So, okay, good. Um, what time is it? 59.58. Okay, probably go ahead and, um, yeah, let's get that there. I'll go ahead and get her um, septum and herbs done. How are they doing that? That's not live? They're saying that it's still live. Yeah, so let me have that. I'm going to anesthetize them. I'm not going to do them until they were live. Yeah. Let's get that out of the way. I'm now injecting above the septal spur here. Get some good auto 
some mucosal diffusion back there, subperiosteal perfusion or diffusion, I should say. Yes. Just hit pause at the top. Or, okay. There we go. Yeah. So things on schedule. Great. Um, the DOP looks great so far. Awesome. We only have about a 20 second delay, which is really good. That's pretty good. How is how are we doing? Fantastic. So we're at eleven o'clock right now. Okay. I'm just injecting the contralateral side. This should be the last one, Gloria. I'd like to re-inject the uh, turbs before we do the turbs at the very end because it'll be a while. Okay. okay. I just think that'll be helpful. Okay. All right. So I think we're good. Let's put some pledgets back in there. <coughs> Let's have suction first. I'll make sure get her keep her throat clear.
ready to lift off in a rocket. <laughs> I told Gloria I felt like we we're all getting ready to lift off in a rocket. <laughs> T minus. T minus 10. Does the balloon look okay? She got it looking snazzy again. Make it look pretty. <laughs> okay, Miss Janet, we're uh, going to start the video pretty soon, okay? So you'll hear me talking. You're doing great. All right. <coughs> You're doing wonderful. <coughs> Can you take some deep breaths for me, dear? That's it. Let's call for a <coughs> She Try to watch the sat for me, too, like she got down. Oh, okay. the there you go, dear. Some nice deep breaths for me. <coughs> there you go. There you go. Can you take some deep breaths for me? That's it. Breathe in and out. That's it. Good. All right. That's it. There you go. Do I have my inhaler right here? Okay. Well, do you feel like you need it? <coughs> yeah.
Hello and welcome. I'm Andy Wells with Augusta ENT and Allergy. I'd like to welcome you to Augusta, Georgia and to this live case presentation supported by Intellis Medical. I trained at Indiana University for medical school and for residency and then uh, immediately came to Augusta, Georgia and set up practice here and I've been here uh, almost 18 years. I like Augusta for a number of reasons. It's a very family oriented city. Uh, they call it the Garden City. Uh, There's always something blooming here, which is good for allergies, uh, for an allergy doctor, that's for sure, and sinus doctor. I, I chose ENT because we have so many different opportunities and variety in the patients that we treat. And the other good thing about it is that patients typically are, get well. We're able to help them clear up their problem, they're happy, and it's just a, a very rewarding field to work in. Being able to, to perform a surgery and, and have a good outcome is, is just critical. And, and if you can do that in a, in a very cost-effective way and with the minimal impact on a patient's lifestyle, then it's a home run. And so the satisfaction as a surgeon to be able to perform these procedures and the patient is not having to be under general anesthetic, so I know they're going to feel so much better just the next day and very quickly, in a day or two, be back to normal activities. Um, it, it brings a lot of satisfaction knowing that what I'm doing is, is not only going to clear up their symptoms, because uh, that's proven, but that the patient's going to be very happy about the whole process and how, how much smoother it is for them. The, the health care system, the, the, the issue with cost is going to drive a lot of change. And things done in the office are so much more cost effective. Um, you don't have an anesthesiologist you have to pay, you don't have to pay a facility fee. Um, most patients pay an office copay, and they are extremely happy about that. So I see more and more things coming to the office, and I'm excited to be a part of that that revolution uh, that's changing the way we treat patients. Well, let me introduce our patient. This patient is Janet. She's a 70-year-old female who has a two-year history of recurrent sinus infections. She has a lot of sinus pressure, a lot of facial pain and headaches, a thick post-nasal drainage, and a lot of nasal congestion. We've treated her with uh, multiple antibiotics over the years. Um, I first saw her two months ago. Uh, we did a CAT scan and uh, found the chronic sinusitis in, in all of her sinuses, uh, which we'll go over here shortly. Uh, we treated her with a full month of antibiotics, uh, broad spectrum antibiotics, and her symptoms just did not clear. In addition to her antibiotics, we treated her with nasal steroid sprays, She's had oral rounds of steroids, also nasal antihistamines, and nasal saline sprays, as well as oral antihistamine decongestant combinations. And all of those things help, but her, systems just, her symptoms just continue to persist. In addition, she's been evaluated for allergies and is currently under allergy treatment. That'll take some time for that to take effect and will be ultimately very helpful in her long-term control but in the near term, we're going to need to address her chronic sinus disease. And we'll review her CT scan at this time. She has thickening here in both uh, the base of both frontal sinuses. Here on the axial scan, you can see that thickening as well into her frontal recess. Moving into her ethmoids, she's got ethmoid thickening a little bit worse on the left than on the right throughout most of her ethmoids. She's got some thickening back here in her sphenoid sinus. She's got a very small right sphenoid sinus. And then as we come down the other direction, she's got uh, thickening at the base, this mucoperiosteal thickening here at the base of each maxillary sinus. On the coronal cut, you can see that extending into her frontal recess, anterior ethmoid area, bilaterally. She has a very large concha bullosa here on the left. She has thickening in both maxillary sinuses. And as we mentioned, a very small right sphenoid. She's got thickening in this left sphenoid sinus. So that concludes her evaluation. We've reviewed her history, her current treatment up to this point. We've reviewed her CT scan. And now let's move to the live case. Hello and welcome.
welcome to the live case. We're here in Augusta, Georgia, and send our greetings to everyone in Miami. We hope the meeting's been going well, and we're excited to have you here with us for this live case. Um, I'd like to thank Intellis for all their hard work in, in setting this up and arranging it. I'd like to thank our patient, Miss Janet, for allowing us to video this and to help doctors and, and patients uh, find better ways to treat our patients in the office. I'd also like to thank uh, my nurses, Gloria and Christina, for all their hard work in, in making these cases go so smooth. So we've um, already gotten Miss Janet um, sedated. We gave her 20 milligrams of Valium, 25 milligrams of Phenergan, and 10 milligrams of Hydrocodone. Uh, we did come back with another 10 milligrams of Valium because she wanted to be just a little bit more drowsy. We gave that about 45 minutes after the initial doses. Then we sprayed her nose with 4% lidocaine and 1 to uh, 1,000 of epi. It's a, a 2 to 1 mixture of, of lidocaine to epi. And now then we did some pre-injections for the sake of saving time. And we strategically did that. I'll point those out here as, as we get started. Got my gloves on. Always good to start that way. So these pledgets were here. I usually place some pledgets um, between the septum and the middle turb, uh, in the middle meatus, here on, and then in between the septum and the inferior turbinate. So what we've got, as you saw on our scan, we've got a concha bullosa on this side, and we're going to begin by dilating this frontal sinus. The, um, there's a large concha here. We'll just gently medialize that. Now, Miss Janet, if you hear some little crinkling, that's us just remodeling things, getting things back on track, restoring the natural size and shape to these sinus openings, and that's what we call the sound of success. So if you hear those little crinkling sounds, don't worry about that. As you see, you can see some edema right here along the uncinate. So first, as far as um, accessing the frontal, I like to use the Intellis Path Assist. It comes at a 78 degree bend. It's got a 1.5 millimeter tip with a um, nice light, fiber optic light source. And we're going to just get behind that uncinate, work our way back, kind of between the bulla and the agronasi, and it feels like it's coming up pretty well. It's got a, a one centimeter and then a two centimeter mark. It feels like that's dropping in pretty well. Um, you can see the excursion on her forehead. Got a good bit of light here in the room, so it may be difficult to see. We'll have a better visualization as we use the light fiber on the uh, Express Ultra Balloon. Thank you, Gloria. So it's pretty well shaped like the Path Assist. And get back here behind that uncinate, see if we can follow that same path. There we go. So it's pretty well up there. Let's advance the light fiber. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. So there's our pinpoint. We'll get a little bit of excursion there. We're clearly in the frontal. As you saw from her CAT scan, her, she's got a dominant left frontal. So we'll just back that off a little bit and advance our balloon. All right. I like to kind of do a dilation here at the kind of a neutral position, if you will. Go ahead and dilate. You might feel some slow, steady pressure, Miss Janet. Can you take some deep breaths for me, Miss Janet? That's it. So we're inflating the balloon. It's a six millimeter balloon. 20 millimeters long, 12 atmospheres of pressure. And now we'll just move up a little bit more, make sure I get that frontal ostium. All right, Gloria. Some more deep breaths for me there, Miss Janet. Can you take some deep breaths for me? Uh -huh. There you go. All right, Gloria. 
And then I like to kind of back off a little bit, make sure I get that frontal recess, any auger nasy cell, I want to make sure we get a nice opening. All right, go ahead. There we go. You want to confirm that, Jamie, with a 30 degree scope? That'd be helpful. Sneak in with a 30 degree scope and see that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You get that 30 degree. About what? They had a question about the applicant. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she just got a little bit of COPD, so we just wanted to supplement her just a little bit. She's at two liters, 97% now. All right, let's sneak in with this. So we can get a good view of our dilation here. That edema on that uncinate might be a little bit of a... Dr. Wells, there's a question from the audience. Um, how is important is it for you once you got that ball tip in the frontal sinus to actually advance that fiber? Is that something you routinely do or just did for this case? Or I think that, that the light guide is extremely important. There, there's your posterior wall, your frontal, and uh, good, good dilation all the way up. There we go, into the frontal there. That light guide, I think, is very important because when you feel like you're in the right place, you advance that light fiber, then you just get further confirmation that you are completely within the sinus, that you're through that frontal ostium, and that your dilation is going to get a good frontal, frontal ostium dilation. So I think it's a, it's a safety factor, and I think it's good confirmation. All right. I think we got a good dilation there. I, I like to show the excursion. I didn't do that, but with the view we got of that frontal sinus opening, I think we're good there. Let's move to her right side of the freer. Now with her septal deviation, it's a little more narrow on this side, but I think it's important. Oftentimes, I think we worry, am I, will we be able to work around this septum? Um, can we still get done what we came to do? And, and I think we'll find that we'll be able to work around that. We'll, we're also going to do a septoplasty, but I think it's important to see how you can accomplish your dilations even with some narrowed anatomy. This is our path assist again. This right sinus is, is fairly small and fairly lateralized. So we'll back here behind that uncinate. Let's see how we're doing there. Make sure that we're in the proper place here. Uh -huh. A little tender there, dear? Uh -huh. Okay. Let's have that. I felt like that was ill on there. We go. So we're just going to see a smaller light, pinpoint light here, just above Okay. Get it in there. Uh, okay. Not quite. Not quite there. No. All right. Turn this way for me, dear. Let's have a little suction so we can see just a little better here. lateral approach can be a little bit trickier when it's when the, the anatomy is a little narrow. Okay. There we go. Sometimes you have to work around that auger nasy. Okay. That seemed to advance pretty well. And there we go. Okay, so leave that in there. 
pretty good pinpoint excursion and it's going to be a little bit smaller sinus there than on the left. Now we can advance our balloon kind of into a neutral position here. All right, Miss Janet, just a little bit of slow, steady pressure. Uh. A little tender there? Uh-huh. Okay, this side is more narrow. We're almost there. Just take some nice deep breaths for me, dear. Great. All right, so we'll advance a little bit more, make sure we get all the way in. Okay, one more time, Gloria. Good. I think we got most of that compression done with the first one. That's it. A few deep breaths for me. And one more here. Right. Okay. Go ahead and advance that uh, wire for me. And so then you can see the excursion you can get now is all the way laterally there to medial. It's a smaller sinus than the other side. All right. Thank you, Gloria. How about that 30 degree? Let's, yeah, let's take a look. On. Oh, still got it on. Well, thank you. How about that? I'm ahead of the game. and didn't know it. All right. Let's get in here and take a look at what we did. Yeah. Make sure I change back so I'm used to it. All right, so there's. There's our dilations. Like I said, a little tight in here, but you can see the nice little recess and things opening up there laterally. It's quite a lateral sinus. All right. Let's have that zero back. I keep my orientation. Thank you. All right, Miss Janet, things are moving along great. You're doing great. So what we'll do now is move back here to the left. We're going to move back to our sphenoid dilation. We'll lateralize this middle turbinate. And even though it's a, a big conchobulosa, which we'll take care of shortly, we can still work around that. We've got our injection back here on the rostrum and had some dis diffusion back toward the the ostium here, so we should have good anesthesia. Dr. Gould said the case is going very well and you're doing an amazing job, so keep it up. Uh, no pressure. Thank you, Dr. Gould. I tell you, we, we appreciate all the advances that, that he's brought about. A lot of what we do is because of things he worked out for us. Now there's a, um, a nice sphenoid probe. Let's verify where we are before we move in. This is the Intellis. It's got a freer on one end, which is very nice, and the other end is a, um, a probe for the sphenoid, you know, about 12 to 15 degrees. This sphenoid sinus here on the left is the dominant sinus. It's also, yeah, okay, dear. It's also pretty lateral right here. There we go. Okay. Let's just maybe get a little more bend in this. Okay. Okay. One nice thing about the Ultra Express is that you can adjust that shape to whatever you need. Okay. So we'll slide on back here and see if that change in that shape, there we go, made a big difference. So, you know, I like to keep it at about the one centimeter mark for safety's sake, and then we'll advance that balloon. Okay, Miss Janet, some slow, steady pressure. A little crinkling. Oh. All right, sorry about oh. that pressure. All right, that'll settle down quickly. I think you only need one dilation with the sphenoid. It's very, very unidimensional sinus. So you can see she's got some mucus in there. We'll go ahead and suction that out. Get one of those um, curved suctions um, from my set there, maybe like a six. Well, I think we're going to need a little bit bigger. 
Um, we did take the light fiber out of the Express and add suction, which is really nice. I think I'm going to need a little bit bigger one for some of that material here in the sinus. Dr. Wells, I noticed that you do monitoring uh, pulse ox, blood pressure. Is that something you routinely yeah. do? Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Jamie. Yeah, I think it's important. We give, um, as I mentioned, um, not quite that, more of just a gentle bend if we could. With given the amount of medication that we do so the patient's relaxed and, and very comfortable, I feel it's important to monitor um, using the, the uh, mixture of epi and the pledgets. And also um, I use one to 200,000 in the injection, which really works just as well. And I think you have less cardiovascular effects from it. But even with that, we really like to keep constant monitoring. Um, so we've got these um, Zoll uh, monitor packs that continuous EKG, blood pressure every five minutes. So you can see some of this material here in the sinus. Ooh. All right, here. Get some of that out. And we probably need to flush this sinus with that material that's in here. Make sure we get that clear. So I like to look in once we dilate that sphenoid. So get some irrigation. Let's um, let's irrigate through the um, ultra the express. We'll just hook it up and we'll we'll irrigate right through the balloon, which is a really nice feature of that. It makes it very versatile. Versatile. You can have suction or irrigation. And again, what I find with um, these cases is that the CAT scan may look fairly clear. There was some thickening in her sinus, but really didn't see a lot of this debris in there. Let's move on. Let's go ahead, while they're getting some um, irrigation set up, let's move on and have the freer. We'll just get this other side. Now, on this ride, as you saw on the CAT scan, we've got a very small, shallow right sphenoid. And it just really kind of slides right back behind that posterior ethmoid cell. Let's use this sphenoid probe, make sure, but it's almost a, a posterior ethmoid cell. There we go. Very small. Let's see if we can see, yeah, right back here. So we should be able to open that up and just make sure that it's got adequate drainage. All right. All right, just Ooh. a okay, just a little bit of pressure, dear. Nice and slow, Gloria. Real slow. Ooh. Ooh. Almost there. Ooh. Ooh. And that's, let's see, is the suction, we don't have any oh. suction on here right now. Can we put some on here? Sorry about, sorry about having some pressure there, Miss Janet. All right. So very small, very small here. I mean, it's almost just a, uh, really just a little pocket behind that posterior ethmoid. Very shallow. It's about as big an opening I think we're going to be able to get. All right. You can see that on that CAT scan. Are you ready for that? Yeah, let's get back and get that irrigation done. Now I'm going to, uh, you've got some mucus inside one of those sinuses that we opened. And I'm going to flush that out, okay? So you probably get a little bit of stuff in your throat, and you just swallow that. It's a little bit of salt water, OK? OK. 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 There we go. OK. Yeah, we'll get the suction in there in just a minute. We'll try to suction out as best we can to keep 
as much out of the throat as we can. All right, now let's have a suction here. We'll have to slip in underneath this septal deviation. Let's back up just a little bit here. Tell you what, let me get this in first. Take that for me. Go ahead and now, Miss Janet, we're going to be suctioning. I'm going to get out as much of it as I can. I'm going to flush out that sinus. All right. There we go. All right. Hang with me now. Just swallow if you need to. Okay. You swallow a little bit for me. Miss Janet, just swallow a little bit. Okay, thank you. There you go, just swallow a little bit. You did great. All right, that's a little tricky always to do that. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on and get these, uh, these maxillaries done. Do that one curve suction for me. All right, let's have the freer. Good. And we'll medialize this middle turbinate. And then we use the Intellis maxillary seeker. I like the 120. There's a 135 also. It's got a 11 millimeter end and an 8 millimeter. I like this 11. And I'll just slide it back here in front of the bulla, lateral, kind of slide down that infundibulum. And usually we'll just kind of slide, there we go, it'll slide in there. I'll kind of give a little AP maneuver just to create some space for the, for the balloon. And we'll go ahead and do the other side here while they're getting that balloon adjusted. So we'll slide in behind that uncinate, down the infundibulum here, and there we go. You usually don't have to force it, but you can feel it. You'll get a little bit of room for that balloon to sneak in there. Very good. You're doing well, Miss Janet. I like to go tip down. I think it's safer. I think it approximates the angle that we're trying to go and uh, usually slips in pretty well. So we're clearly in here. I'm going to advance the balloon. I like to do several dilations here. I like to push posterior first. Some slow, steady pressure, Janet. Here we go. We get some good anterior movement of the, uh, of the uncinate. And then I like to actually pull it anterior. And let's inflate again. All right, dear, doing good. And after we're done, we'll see some good, good excursion of the, of the space. Very nice space here. Easy to move, maneuver in and out. And that's a good dilation. All right, we'll come over here and we'll finish these up. Same technique. Slip behind that uncinate, slide down. There we go. We'll advance that balloon. Okay, slow, steady pressure. Very good, very good. Doing fantastic. All right, and then pulling anterior. One more, Gloria. Good. That uncinate's got a good displacement. I think we'll have a good dilation. All right. 
pleased with that. All right, so that completes our dilations. We're going to move on to, um, I'll turn you this way, dear. We're going to get this concha bellosa taken care of. We'll use the Intellis sickle knife here just to get into that. Very good. How about some straight endoscopic scissors? Thank you. We've got the full array of Intellis endoscopic instruments. I like to use the zero and 30 degree scope. Uh, let's to the right. It's got a 100% field of vision, three millimeter scope, really nice to use. Do you have a typical order that you do these types of, you know, after you've done the balloon or just kind yes. of? Yeah, the order of the procedure, the flow is important. Um, the balloon comes bent for the frontal, so we'll start with that. And then just based on the, the ease of bending, let's have a Takahashi, uh, it's easier to unbend it to the sphenoid curve of 12 to 15 millimeters. And then, uh, and then you're able to, there we go, and we can tidy this up with our shaver as well. Yeah, let's have that curve to the right. Uh, and then it's easy to, to, to then do the, from, a, from more of a straight curve to, to do your maxillary bend, which you, once you do that, it's, it, it is more cumbersome. We've done it if you have to, but it's, it's better than um, trying to unbend that maxillary curve of, of 120 or 135, whichever you prefer. There we go, the last remnant. There we go. And we'll tidy up those little edges with our have the suction with the uh, debrider here. Okay, not getting any suction on here, so might need to change the device. All right, so that takes care of our concha bellosa. Got a suction for me? Thank you. Can, can we get that other size that we normally use? Christina, this is... Yeah, it's just a, just that normal size straight foot seven. We'll I'll tidy up this little edge right here with the debrider. All right, so now we're going to move on to the ethmoid. We we'll use a stort shaver. Um, one thing that's important as we work here is um, you have to. We like to preserve the uncinate when we do dilations. We don't want to preserve as much anatomy as we can. Um, I, I just wanted you to have it ready. Got to do a couple things real quick. So let's have the curette. We'll open up our burla, but you have, we have to remember we're working behind a, an intact uncinate, so there's some cells here that we need to make sure we get into. A little tender there. All right. And so what we'll do sometimes, if there's a little tenderness, we'll just re-inject. We'll make sure we get that settled down, dear. Don't you worry. Okay. And Christina, that, that, that is um, too far away. If you can pull that cart a little closer, that'd be great. Thank you. Now, we injected this phenopalatine area back here before. Let's see if we can get a little bit more control. Okay. Got to re refill our cartridge. Right where that inferior turbinate, excuse me, the middle turbinate turns lateral, is where we like to try to get that best sphenopalatine injection. There we go, should be a little bit better here. I don't see an accessory os quite yet. <coughs> Um, the remodel study really helped answer the question about do we need to connect those while doing balloon dilation. And um, there was a really good head-to-head -head study there. 
oh, probably over 100 patients where they compared um, <coughs> FES patients that had maxillary entrostomy where that was connected with the osteum. Um, let's have the uh, debrider now. And balloon patients that had the di balloon dilation done and the accessory os was left intact and there was no difference in the outcomes of those patients at a year. So we just leave those intact. All right. Now this is a little machine, Miss Janet, that just really just gently cleans up these sinuses. Really nice. But it's kind of a little funny sound. This Stortz uh, system is really nice in that it, um, it's quiet. It's a really good job for us. The, um, there's two, three, and four millimeter blades. They're reusable, autoclavable. You can get 30, 40, 50 uses out of these. Makes it very economical. Let's get that little remnant we had here before. So I use, I like to use, if I can get it in, I like the four millimeter. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't clog as much. One of the first thing I always notice is so we're getting in here to the uh, posterior ethmoids now, going through the ground ground lamella right here. Well, let's have a curette, please. <coughs> Thank you. Just want to talk through the ethmoids a little bit more and how you do them. Yeah, I like to um, open up that ethmoid bulla. I like to use a curette. Some folks use a, um, a, a Blakesley. Uh, as we mentioned, want to make sure that we work behind this intact uncinate here that we reach up and we get some of these, these buller cells here. We'll make sure we get that taken care of. Um, do we have a, like an upbiting through cut? Please. Thank you. We'll reach around, make sure we clean off that lamina real nice. Good. Go. I noticed you use the pediatric instruments. Is that something that you yes, adopted? Yes, these, these uh, Intellis instruments are really nice because they're they're a little longer, which makes them easier to use in adults. Uh, but they're very streamlined uh, with the pediatric size. The shafts have been reinforced, so they're, they're nice and sturdy. And can we get, uh, this is a nine, I want the normal seven on here. We, would you mind, That's, that'll just probably be a little better. Thank you. So I really like those, those instruments. They've got all the, all the complement of the different things we like. So we reached up, we got that lamina cleaned off pretty well. All right, so we can see skull base here very clearly. I don't think that, you know, you, it has to be every little partition taken down. I think as long as those air cells have been, I like to preserve as much tissue as I can. So our lamin is here, superior ethmoids here, all the way through to the posterior here. So I think we've got a a good clean out there. And uh, one thing to point out, I, I really, really enjoy doing cases here in the office. Um, the, the bleeding is much, much less. I see much better. It's safer. The patient feedback is so helpful. So I think um, those are really important points and really big advantages to doing cases in the office and doing ethmoids in the office. All right, let's have a pleasure. We'll move on to the left side. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving right along, Miss Janet, doing great. You are doing wonderful. Okay. Okay. All righty. All right, let's have a freer. We'll create a little space here for us. 
I think um, let's get those Intellis forceps. Very helpful in just thinning out these um, middle turbinates, the Intellis uh, turbinate forceps. Oh, okay. There we go. That's perfect, thanks. Um, you know, small conches, r really any size. Um, wanted to just do a normal excision over on the, on the patient's left there, but if we can thin this out a little bit, every little bit makes a difference. Very good. There we go. And then you can just slide that right in and open and kind of gives you a good view Ooh. of where you're looking. All right, just to make sure Miss Janet's staying comfortable, let's have a little more injection here. We'll get that sphenopalatine area. Um, doing good, dear. My nose itching. Nose is itching? All right, we can help with that. We're good nose My itchers. Mouth is so dry. All right, we'll get you some ice chips here in just a minute. Okay, there we go. Turn this way for me. Excellent. I know we're getting a lot done. You're really doing fantastic. Dr. Kaplan asked um, why you didn't use the turbinate forceps at the beginning of the case. Um, probably should have. Um, but the the path assist just went right in and I felt like I was able to maneuver in there but getting the, the four millimeter uh, debreeder blade is going to need a little bit of room and I also wanted to demonstrate you know that the, how well it works I use it about every case all right let's see how well that does for us that was a bad question by me I shouldn't right. have said that let's have a curette a little bit um, less um, mucosal disease on this side, so probably not won't do as extensive as an ethmoid over here. Also for the sake of time, we did a total on the other side and that, that needed it more. And we'll get things going here. All right, this is, get my cords here just a little bit freed up, very good. All right, young lady, let's get you over here. Very good. Okay. And you know, with, with cases that take a little while, um, you don't have to be afraid to go back and re-inject. Just want to keep the patient comfortable. Um, you just got to take your time. I think if I could quote Dr. Gould, I, I love the quote of go slow to go fast. And you just have to be very methodical and, and very deliberate about what you do. Um, don't want to be in a rush. Patients don't want to sense that. So. Things opened up back here, okay. Went ahead and just cleared out the posterior area. Let's have a 90 peds, please. All right, Miss Jan, and I'm gonna have you turn this way. I know you're keeping me honest and kind of watching what we're doing. Okay. Very good. So we can that piece here. Very good. Okay, let's have the curette. Just a few more little crinkles. We'll be there. We got our lamina identified pretty well here. We really have all the way back into our posterior ethmoids. Uh, we'll get a little bit more of this suprabolar area here behind the uncinate. And then we've got our frontal recess here. We're going to leave that alone. 
Don't want to stimulate any scarring there. How about a 90 peds? I'll just reach up behind there and clear out some of that tissue behind the insonate so we can practice what we preach. Okay. Very good. There we go. Okay, debreeder, and we'll tidy up and we'll be done here with that. Again, overall, I think you'd agree that the minimal bleeding that we have to deal with is just extremely helpful in really seeing what we're doing. You know, good, good clean out. All right. Very good. Let's get a pledge in there. Dr. Wells, there's a question yes. from the audience. Uh, after you do the ethmoids, do you go up and look at the frontal to see if any of that work that you've done with the balloon is compromised? or? If I have a question about it, I do. Typically, I don't. Um, that uh, is, is not, a, not a bad idea at all. Um, I usually make a point to um, be very cautious around my frontal recess and where I where I did the dilation. If there's any question, definitely go back and check that. And it looks like you're more inferior on this particular case. So. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the septoplasty. How are we doing on time, Jamie? Uh, we're at 12 o'clock. So okay, okay, yeah. So let's, let's get this septoplasty done and we have more time, we could go back and do a lot of the other. So we're gonna, here's this, here's this spur coming out here, and we're just gonna make a nice Killian incision here. And just begin to elevate that off so that we can straighten things up in here and get her breathing better. And with the, with the septoplasty, it's just a, this is one step at a time. Miss Janet, you'll just hear some, some little sounds in there, okay? Uh -huh. Just me working away. Don't get too alarmed by that. I'm gonna come underneath here. And we'll get some little rinse on this side. We'll make sure we keep things protected on the contralateral side, which I'm gonna slide over to here in just a second, right there. We'll slide over to that side. And I don't, I like to kind of get over here and look, and so we're preserving that side over there. We'll just slide on up. And create just a little more space. The uh, swell body has become a, a really more, much more recognized structure that I think we're going to be, it's going to be important for us to, to really pay attention to. So we're on the other side here and we'll start removing some of this tissue. Let's have a Takahashi. Just to find our space going back. I, I, I do the bulk of the work with, with a coddle and um, certainly some through cuts and some Takahashi's. Um, if I have a lot of a lot of structure we need to deal with, you know, some Jansen Middleton's can be real helpful. Um, although they're bulky, we're looking for some smaller Jansen Middleton's. Okay, let's have um, the caudal again. Very good. And Miss Janet's doing great. Just continuing to elevate things here. Kind of coming around the other side of that spur. There we go.
Let's get some of this mucosa elevated inferior to it. There we go. I think we're going to be able to slide in there pretty well. Was Just it a, 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 tr a, a large transition for you going from to an endoscopic septoplasty versus what you're doing in a traditional septoplasty? You know, that, that's a really good question. Um, it, it, I, I did not do endoscopic septoplasties you know, prior to beginning these in-office procedures. Um, I, honestly, the, in the OR, the bleeding was often so much that it, I, felt, I found it difficult. But with, um, with how well that does here and the, the, the minimal bleeding, I, I can see. And so I, I enjoy doing them. And I think it works very well and it's very functional. All right, let's have, um, let's have the through cut. Thank you. All right, Miss Janet, we're just rolling right along here. Just stay with us. I know these are some funny sounds there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But those are the sounds of success, as we said. That's going to really help. Let's see. I don't think we got all the pieces off of there. Good. Let's see if we can go superior to that spur and open some of that up here for us. For us. I don't know if I've got that elevated as much as I like. Let's have a, a coddle. Just be sure. There we go. Should be, should be free. Okay, let's keep that up there. Okay, let's have um, let's have those through cuts again. Thank you. Now yeah, see if we can define this free things up here superiorly. Good. have the Takahashi. Thank you. Should just about have it and we'll take a look. We'll lay our flaps back down and see where we're at. That's a good bit of the spur right there. <clears throat> Let's have some suction and see what we've got here. Usually these flaps will come back together real nice. A little bit of cartilage left here we need to take care of. A little bit of cartilage here. Okay. Let's have the Takahashi again. Thank you. Just about got it. I think we'll see things opening up for us nicely as we come back in. What I like to put on each side of the septum is some zero gel after this is over. It does a good job of just keeping some pressure there and it dissolves very quickly. I like to use that in the ethmoids also. It's, uh, it's just excellent. Uh, does a good job with spacing, dissolves quickly, leaves a very clean cavity. All right, we should be pretty close being done on this septoplasty. Let's have a little suction. Good. Good. Let's kind of lay those flaps back down now. Let's have the freer. Good. Let's get some of these pieces out of there now. Suction. 
we completely preserved the right side, so this will heal just fine. Get some of the little remnants out real quick. I like to re-inject the turbinates at the end just because they can the vascularity can wash out that local. And then we'll, if we've got time, we'll get that turbinate reduction done. If we have to go to break, we'll finish it up here. I like to, as often as I can, try to clear things out, any secretions from the back of the back of the throat and nasopharynx. All right. So that's a nice straight septum there. Let's go ahead and re-inject that turbinate. Do we have time to try to finish that up, Jamie? Any questions from the audience? Yeah, uh -huh. Was that last part okay, Janet? Uh -huh. A lot of noise, but didn't didn't bother you much? Uh -uh. Great. Okay. Fantastic. Alrighty. Thank you. I do it after just, just, just so I can see the turbinate real well and have a little bit more room to work. Okay. I like to use the two millimeter blade on the on our debrider. And I, I really like to, to create a nice channel for air to flow up and hit that middle turbinate and then down it goes. That's the best sense of, um, of air flow that patients have. The two millimeter blade does a great job. Don't get a lot of tears in the mucosa. Um, if, you want to re if you really feel like you need to get a lot of bone or more bone, the three millimeter blade is, can be used for that. Okay, very good. I'll go ahead and hit that debrider now. Thank you. We'll use this sickle to go ahead and just get a little opening here. I like to kind of use it to get my pocket. Makes it easier to advance that. Advance the device. There we go. Very good. Okay. Gloria often crimps the suction for me, so uh, it makes it easier to slip into the, the opening. All right, there we go. And then we'll downsize that spongiosa, that vascular tissue. I also like to outfracture at the end. I think, I think it just creates a better airway. You have the zero, zero gel ready. Please, we'll put a sheet on each side of the septum and then we'll also uh, put our normal into the ethmoids. And had a little opening there in the back. That won't cause any trouble. Let's see here, Gloria. Make sure I get a little higher up here. Get that swelling at the head here. Oh, well, there we go. That's responding nicely. Very good. So you can see the reduction, the channel we've got now straight back. Okay. Let's have the uh, freer. Let me get that lateralized. I like to put a little pledget along there just for some compression until I'm ready to put the zero gel in. Can I have the Afrin patty, please? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Very good. So 
septum's looking good, turbine it's reduced. I think it's going to be a good airway for her. Let's get this last turbinate and we'll be all finished. Yes. What? go. So we've um, done just about all you can do with all the dilations. Pretty much full ethmoids on both sides, concha bullosa, turbinate reduction, septoplasty, and I think we're coming in right about an hour. All right. Getting a good reduction here. And I think Dr. Gould's saying is true. We just slowly kind of went through each step and still were able to get a lot done in, in, a, in a reasonable amount of time. Had a fantastic patient, great crew. Good. Thank you. We'll go ahead and get that lateralized. Very good. Pretty good airway, I think. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and Miss Jana, you did fantastic. I just have to put a little gel in those sinus openings that'll help them heal up well, and we're all finished. Did fantastic. All right. How about that suction? Very good. There's some different ways to get this zero gel in. I, you can put it in. Um, fairly dry or just dip it real quick and then um, hydrate it while it's in here. I, I, I just just go ahead and hydrate it and, and then slip it in and it tends to work okay that way. Is this half of half of one? Is yeah so can I have the half for the sinus? I need two holes and a half. Okay we're gonna I'm gonna put a whole one on each side of the septum. And then, so, there we go. Okay. Usually just have to push, push it off the end of my bayonets here with, with the head of my scope. We'll get it nice and hydrated. And then we'll slide it right in. There we go. Very good. It'll absorb some moisture and expand nicely for what we need. Okay, good. All right. Let's have that other half here. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us today. I think we're just finishing up and placing the, uh, the packing. I hope the rest of your meeting is fantastic and you have a great time in Miami. Thanks for joining us. Oh, good. <laughs> They're not booing or hilariously laughing. Oh, that, that went really good, Miss Janet. You're going to see a you're going to see a big difference. Great. Great. Okay. Great. All right. We're going to put these zero gel sheets now on each side. 
Make sure that septum heals just right. All right, so kind of got a little bit of a floppy gel thing here, but it works really well for what we want it to do. Now turn back this way for me so I can see real well this last okay. little bit that we put in. So I get it just right. I think that septum looks good. Okay. Okay. gets real slippery, doesn't it? Okay. Good. All right, young lady. Let me slip that in there. Make sure those flaps stay down, which they look good there. Okay, I'm going to pull that forward. There we go. Excellent. All right, that concludes the case. You wanna... Okay. Um, well, how did you think that went, Miss Janet? Overall, did you feel like you were able to tolerate it okay? Was it too uncomfortable? No. No? Just some pressure a couple times? Yeah. Yeah? And that, did that go away pretty quick? Yeah, it was, it was okay. I mean, I felt... You know, sometimes I felt felt, felt a little bit. Are yeah. you doing okay now as, as yeah. we're finishing up? Yeah. Okay. Good. Doing good. Good. All right. Now, don't sniff too hard because I've got some little gel in your nose okay. that's going to hold everything in place. Okay. So just breathe through your mouth. We're going to get you some ice chips because I know your throat's dry. All righty? Yeah, like yeah. We're going to get that fixed here in just a second.